Hello everybody, Ben from Adrano Day, back for another one and uh, quite looking forward to this because um, I've not had it but I'm hearing good things about it. So this is one where I do actually have the bottle rather than the sample and this is Hatazaki uh, Pure Malt. Um, so this is a blended malt. Um, this, uh, you can see how much is left in this. Um, this was actually uh, very kindly given to me um, by a, a lady called Helen Wainwright who works for uh, Marussia Beverages who are the UK distributor for the Hatazaki brand and from my understanding Marusi Beverages are owned by a company who also own Hatazaki as well so it's all kind of interlinked. Uh, last year, late last year in the run up to Christmas I was doing some shows as part of my role, uh, my current employment and uh, she was on a table next to me doing the Marusi brands. Um, she's absolutely wonderful. We, uh, I, I was about to say we're good friends. We're friends on Facebook and I get on really well with her and she had a tiny, tiny little bit left in the bottle and she said, would you like that to try it? And I was like, brilliant, thinking, actually I'll do a Drama Day video on it and it's only now that I've got around to doing it. So what I'm hoping is that little bit that's left is going to be enough for a 25ml sample. So we'll see what we get to when we get to the jigger. However, before that, let me tell you a little bit about Hatazaki, the brand and the distillery itself. Hatazaki is produced at the Kaikyo Distillery, situated in the city of Akashi in the Hyogo Prefecture, 35 miles east of Osaka. It's based at the Akashi Tai Saki Brewery, but be aware that it has no links to the Akashi brand of whiskies, which confusingly are made at the Aigashima Akashi White Oak Distillery, just 8 miles away. Hatazaki is named after the nearby lighthouse, the oldest stone lighthouse in Japan which has been in operation since 1620. Saki has been brewed at Akashi Tai since 1856 and is still in the hands of the Yonazawa family. The current Toji, or master brewer, is Kimio Yonazawa. Distilling has been taking place since 1917 to produce neutral alcohol and shochu, a uniquely Japanese spirit, but it wasn't until the Scotch distilling and blending company Mossburn installed two pot stills as part of their shared ownership that whisky making commenced in May 2017. While waiting for stocks to mature to release as their own single malt, Hatazaki currently has two bottlings. The blended malt, called Pure Malt, features malt whiskies from not just other Japanese distilleries, but also other countries, although it's probably all Scotch to be honest. There is also a blended whisky featuring grain and malt whiskies, again from countries other than Japan. The whiskies within both have been matured in ex bourbon casks, ex sherry casks, and also Japanese Mizunara oak casks. At some point in 2022, the Yonazawa Family Reserve Single Malt should be released to the public, so consumers can finally find out what the distillery is capable of producing on its own. So, let's crack on and find out what it tastes like. So, uh, this is the pure malt, as I mentioned earlier. So, this is the blended malt, so it's a combination of malt whiskies from a number of Japanese distilleries. Now weirdly, some of the websites I was looking at was also talking about stocks from Kaikyo stroke Hatazaki itself. But I'm not sure how that's possible given that they supposedly were distilling since 2017. But who knows. Um, and also, because we're talking about Japanese whiskies and we've already mentioned before about regulation on Japanese whiskies is very loose. So you can be called a Japanese whiskey and have whiskies from other countries within your blend. Um, so. By the fact that um, Mossburn, which uh, I think is the same as Marussia, there is a, I think it's a Swedish parent company that owns Mossburn, that owns Kaikyo, that owns Marussia, it's all kind of interlinked. Um, given that there is this close ties with Mossburn, I, I think this is probably just Japanese malt whiskies and Scotch malt whiskies, and that's it. What that makeup is, absolutely no idea. No age statement on it at all. So we don't know what the ages are. Um, and we don't know what the constitution is. All we basically know is it's 46% ABV, which is not a bad ABV at all. So let's find out exactly how much is in left in this bottle. If it's 25 mil, we oh, it's going to be close. Uh, and there's a tiny bit left. It is 25 mil. So there we go. So let's just pop that in there. Now, I've just realized on my last video I didn't even do the color of it. So um, there we go. Do apologize about that. But you can probably see straight off the bat this is very, very pale indeed. So let me just get my sheet. There we go. 
very pale indeed. That actually looks quite bright, so I don't know. I don't know if that's really going to come through because on my iPad that I'm looking at, that white sheet looks really, really bright. So my colour balancing might be shot to whatever. So very, very pale indeed. Um, kind of like a white wine, you know, like you look at that and go, oh, that would be a Riesling or something like that. A really, really pale white wine colour. Um, but, you know, colour, obviously colour's not been added to that, clearly, because it would be a downside darker. Um, don't really know about chill filtration. Personally, not that bothered. Chill filtration, whatever. Does it taste good? That's the most important thing. Um, but this would, I think, surprise some people if you poured it to them in a glass and they were like, would you like a whiskey? And gave them that. You'd be like, wow, that's really, really pale. Is that really young? Is it really light? I've had some people that said, oh, the darker it is, the peatier it is because the water runs through the peat and picks up the colour of the earth. Nonsense. But that sort of thing where people go at that and go, oh, that's really light for a whiskey. That must be like two, three years old. That sort of thing. So, on the nose, very unusual note and almost a whiny note. And I don't know if it's because I've looked at the colour and mentioned something like white wine, but there is a there is a dry white wine element. There is like a dry fruitiness that's slightly floral. So we're talking we're talking gooseberries, but there's grapes, but there's a dryness to it as well not quite hay slightly oily as well almost petrolly very unusual now i'm wondering if this is coming from the mizanara oak um which does give a slightly more kind of floral drier note to it but a very unusual nose very slightly petrolly slightly sweet not astringent, but really quite strange. Oh, that's really going to bug me now. But it's got that petrolly note of, you know, something like Riesling, something like that. Very sharp, and I think some people would be going, "Oh, that's that's quite sharp on the nose," but it, it is really distinctive and unusual. So not quite, not quite as petrolly on the palate, but it's quite tart, but in a good way, quite zingy. Citrusy, gooseberries is there again, but we've also got lemon zest, lime. Petrolly note is coming through now, but not in a bad way. 46%, so a slightly higher ABV than, than you might expect from what would be a bog standard bottling. And that is coming through. You can you can tell that slightly higher alcohol percentage, but it works. It's not overpowering. Softens down towards the finish as well, and this um, nice sort of lemon curd feel comes through. It starts off quite tart, but then it starts to mellow, and the mouth feel almost thickens up. I'll have to try this again. Hmm. There's an interesting amount going on here. I would say it's quite summery, but there's a little bit more oomph to it. There's a little bit more power that it's difficult to say I can picture myself drinking this on a summer's day because there is a lot more going on to it. There's a bit more of a sharpness to it that you can't quite relax with it. You can't just sip it and carry on and look at the, you know, feel the warmth or read a book or whatever. This needs a little bit more work from you as a drinker to go with it. And that's not a bad thing at all. Uh, and I do wonder what this would be like chilled, you know, even at the freezer where it can kind of knock that, that fire down a little bit. Now, this is, you're looking at about $44.95, uh, Master of Mall. I think Amazon had this as well. In fact, I'm gonna check my phone just to be on the safe side because I did write this down and of course I've lost it. Yeah, $44.95 at Master of Mall and the Whiskey Exchange and Amazon of all places. So you might be thinking, oh, you know, blended malt, 45 quid, that's a bit pricey. Well, no, not really, because A, it's a blended malt, so you don't have that grain whiskey in there to keep your costs down. And it's Japanese, you know, look at the, Look at it. It's got a great big Japanese characters written all over the front of it. 
you could charge 60 70 quid for that because that's what japanese whiskies are asking for at the moment so it's actually relatively i believe relatively reasonably reasonably priced and i think you could pick that up for 45 quid and not be too disappointed by it at all little hint of peak coming through now as well little bit of a smokiness just starting to come through now it's not quite there on the nose but that might be what's giving that slightly petroly edge it's an odd kind of peatiness though it's sweet and sharp it's not obvious but I think it's there I think there is an element of some peated whiskey used in this I don't know what it is and it's almost like the TCP element of iodine is right there at the background really low down kind of hiding and just kind of giving a slight influence that it's not obvious that it is peat it comes across as something else it's really interesting I do think that some people will try this and think it's too sharp. I'm thinking of my father-in-law, for one, who is going to try this if I had a little bit spare and I gave it to him blind and I said, what do you think of that? I think he would think it's too sharp. That's his phrase when it's got this bite to it that you need to work with and he clearly doesn't work, want to work with it. But there is complexity in here. Finish dies off a little bit quickly. There is a little bit to start with. Good few seconds, there is something at the back of the throat which is kind of creamy and rich, but still still kind of sweet spice sharpness. It's quite unusual, quite hard to describe. Um, it's very, very interesting. But I think for some people, it's not gonna be mellow enough. It's not gonna be deep enough. This is high notes of a whiskey. These are all kind of high notes of a, of a singer. This, you know, this is, um, I can't even think of anybody that sings in high notes. I don't know, Mika, was that, was that the one? I don't know, Mika, Scissor Sisters, something like that. There, there is nothing low, there is nothing deep in this whiskey. This is very much light and, and bubbly and kind of light, high pitched pop. Scissor Sisters, that kind of thing, that kind of high notes of la 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 type thing. There's nothing particularly deep and rich about this, but that's a good thing because the, it has something interesting to it that gives you something to work with it's not just a get it down your neck and have done very very interesting unusual i'm just really intrigued to know what the makeup of this is that's giving that kind of odd almost petroly citrusy zingy kind of element that's there It's one that's going to just keep changing as well. See, I'm getting oak now. I'm getting quite dry oak is coming through. But again, not overpowering. It all kind of, you know, mellows in and, and plays around and dances around and then goes off and then comes back again as something else. Really unusual, really interesting. Um, I'd, be, I'd be fascinated to know what the blended whiskey is like with that grain element as to whether it's as complex as this or whether having less malts in and more of a grain element kind of like knocks everything down a little bit but what i'll also be interested to know is when we get to the family reserve single malts whether there's anything in their own whiskey that's anywhere akin to what is going on with with this pure malt um because you know is this a supposed to be a representation of what their whiskey will be like or is this just right we've got this for you while we're making our own have this enjoy this and then we'll give you our stuff um, when it's ready to come out but all in all if you find this and you can find this for about 40 45 quid i recommend it i really do i think if you if you like japanese whiskies it's well worth a go it's definitely up there in the better japanese whiskies even if it does have whiskies from outside of japan because as we've kind of established that's just the way it is with japanese whiskies so just go with it um 
but it's it's definitely up there with the most one of the most more interesting. I think it's reasonably priced uh, for a Japanese, but the way that the market's going, there are Japanese whiskies for about 40, 45 quid that are nowhere near as interesting as this by any means. Some of them are pretty fucking horrible. Um, but that is light, it's, it's interesting, it's delicate, it's funky, it's got loads of stuff going on with it. Um, I think it's well worth chilling in, in the fridge or the freezer and then seeing what it's like on a summer's day. I think it would work like that. I think it'd be great in cocktails because there is enough zing and enough bite to it that's going to cut through other like mixers and other ingredients that you put in a cocktail so i think that would work really well so all in all very interesting and i like whiskies that are interesting uh, and i think the price point is good so helen yes you know i think it's probably quite an easy win for you because you've got a japanese whiskey that's easy to drink and it's very interesting that's at a good price point so you know i wish we had that on our portfolio so uh yes good stuff uh, if you can find it and you can in the UK then go for it by all means uh, that's me done so we are on 380 next one I think um, so I shall see you at the next one stay safe keep well see you soon cheers